Great, thank you. Um, well, actually, it's really interesting following on from Matthew Ward's talk because in some respects, we did some very similar things, although there are some differences. Um, and the student responses were actually quite similar in some respects, but there are also some points of divergence as well that um, I will perhaps spend a bit more time thinking about as I go through. So um, if you could move on to the next slide. Um, I too was using Talis Elevate on a trial and my principal interest was in using it for uh, primary source materials. So in that respect, Matthew Ward and I had very similar objectives for, for this trial. I have a trial did on two quite contrasting modules. I had a sort of compulsory first year historical methods module um, called the problem of the past, which um, pretty much everyone who has the word history in the title of their degree has to take. Um, but I also trialed it on a second year military history module, which is uh, not compulsory and is, is a much narrower focus. It looks at the First World War. So they, they were quite different in terms of the makeup and composition of the student bodies taking them. And of course, the levels were quite distinct. In some respects, though, they were quite uh, similar in format. I have a very traditional format of an hour's lecture with my, myself outlining the topic, followed by an hour's seminar, looking at it in more detail. And traditionally, I would do that with primary sources, but there'd be primary sources that would be handed out rather than having been available ahead of time on TALIS. So TALIS was a new way of getting the primary sources to the students. Um, and it did mean, of course, that they could look at the primary sources essentially for the whole module from the word go if they wanted to, because I loaded them all up at once, which in the past, I would not have done in order to allow me to chop and change primary sources near the time. Um, OK, so that, that's, that's what I did. Um, if we could move forward to the next slide. Um, the first year extracts were in essentially word format. They were transcriptions, a bit like this example here. So everything had been tidied up for the students. They got a sort of nice clean sheet of easy to read material, as you can see here from the uh, excerpt from the um, David Irving, Deborah Lipstadt uh, libel trial uh, for a session we were doing on Holocaust denial. Um, the students could read that relatively straightforward. And I, although I gave them access to the entire thing, if they wanted to look at, um, selected extracts were, were for the class. Whereas, if we go to the next slide, for the second year students, they got photographic reproductions of the document in question. And that was so that we could not just focus on the content of the document, but so that we could also look at the document as artifact. Um, and this allowed for conversations about uh, provenance, for example, or um, in-text changes or other things, um, or in the case of um, certain government documents, changes in use across the life of the document. That is something you can't do if you have a transcription. Um, and of course, uh, whilst there was a change week by week in both classes, it was pretty much always on the First World War for the second year extracts, whereas we moved around quite a lot in the nature of the material for the first year. Um, OK, next slide. I wanted to know what the students thought. I had my own views on this. And of course, TALIS accumulates uh, metric data as it goes along. So there is at the end quite a, a detailed summary of who did what, when, why and how. Um, but I wanted to know what the students actually thought, um, because very often what the students think and what the lecturer thinks are, are two quite different things. I remember many moons ago teaching a class at a different university, chatting with some of the students after it. And I sort of slightly bemoaned the fact that we weren't getting more in class discussion, only to be met by some blank, um, well, some disbelieving faces of people telling me it was the most interactive class they had which made me wonder about the other classes, but also about the difference in expectations. So I, I had a questionnaire 
Um, the question there was a paper one because our students don't tend to fill in online um, questionnaires. Our end of module surveys have very low response rates. Um, but if I make time in class with a bit of paper, they will fill it in. Uh, the questions probably would have made my politics um, colleagues who actually work on opinion polls shudder with horror at the leading nature of them. But they were designed to elicit certain types of responses. It has to be said, in some of them, I got no responses worth recording. So in, in giving you the student feedback, I have edited out the, the, the more marginal of these. What was interesting in the responses was just how different the first and year second first and second year replies actually were, which is something that I will highlight now in relation to, and also in relation to Matthew Ward's experience. So if we go on to the next um, slide. So the first year students, uh, half of all respondents claimed to be active users. Um, what they defined as active might not have been what I defined as active, but it is about their understanding, not mine, that's the issue here. And half would broadly correspond to the metrics that Talis provided at the end. So I think these were reasonably honest replies. Um, and a half wasn't a bad figure for a variety of reasons. I had some people who were just not very um, keen on using IT at all for some reason, despite you know what we tend to think about um, the student body. Perhaps less encouraging was where, you know, the answer to the question, why did they use TALIS, which was pretty much universally because I told them to. Um, so, and okay, I mean, at one level, I suppose that's good in the sense that it means they are doing what I'm asking them to do. But I had rather hope for a bit more enthusiasm in terms of its utility. I didn't get that in the first years. When asking them about its benefits, I got essentially three types of answers. Uh, the most common was they were interested in what other people thought, which was good because that's part of the purpose of the exercise. Um, they were interested in seeing different perspectives. That's not quite the same as the first answer. And some of the ways in which they expressed that, I think, indicated, I suppose, a difference between curiosity versus under, different understandings of what the document might contain. And then I think quite encouragingly, um, many of them suggested that they read ahead because it was on Talis, whereas they might not have read ahead, it was implied, had it not been. Uh, which I think is of enormous utility because it means they actually come to the seminar with some prior preparation that I can measure. I did ask them because this was a suggestion in a previous panel that Matthew Weldon had organized that assessing this would be a good idea. Uh, now, I asked them what they thought about that. They did acknowledge that more people would spend more time using it were it assessed. But equally, most of them thought that the use would be artificial. It would be to impress rather than to learn, um, which I think would be a problem. Uh, it would certainly detract from what I'm trying to use it for, if that is the case. My question as to whether it make any difference to them if I put secondary rather than primary sources elicited the view that they were completely indifferent to that. Um, that, however, I will note in advance is not the answer I got from the second years. OK, so let's contrast that with the second years. We move on to the other slide. There was a higher proportion of active users, um, both in terms of their claims, but also in terms of what the metrics produced. And that, I think, largely corresponded with my experience. Uh, I should say that they were not only more likely to use it in the second year, they were more likely to use it um, more consistently and in greater detail. So they were more likely not just to post, but then to post and respond to other posters in, in the second year. Uh, I didn't get the answer we were told to do it as the reason for why they were doing it. I didn't get that at all in the second year. Uh, I got a lot of people saying that it was their way of getting to the primary sources, which is good. I did get that same thing to see other views, which again is good. Several people thought it was actually a good way to develop their own ideas by working through and commenting. Um, and just to 
slip down briefly to the benefits thing that um, related to the personal annotation facility. Um, and then one person who I've quoted said it was foolish to go into the seminar blind and elevate was their mechanism for not doing so, which I thought was actually a really you know, good answer. The benefits were access to primary materials they would not otherwise have had. Um, again, seeing other people's views was highlighted here at uh, the same time as in reasons for doing it. And then several people liked the personal annotation facility, um, which I think was quite useful for them. On the assessment front, I did get a replication of we would use it more, but it would be forced. But I also got some people saying that they thought it would be a novel and interesting form of assessment that they would quite like. It was fairly evenly balanced on this. Um, so if this is a representative group, it would be difficult to know where to go on this. Interestingly, and in contrast to the first years, they were universally of the view that if I put secondary materials up, they were much less likely to use Elevate because they could get the secondary materials through other means that they were already used to. So they wouldn't see the value of doing it that way. Whereas with primary materials, they did definitely see the value. Next slide. So I have a couple of obvious reservations. One, the sample size, particularly for the second year module was quite small. So how representative it is is difficult to know. And of course, when you do something only once, you do have the cohort effect to take into account uh, that there is no way of knowing this is representative until you've run this a few times um, in the same way. Leaving all that aside, um, the second year group were considerably more positive about Elevate than the first year, which isn't to say that the first year were negative, um, but I think there was more sort of indifference, whereas the second years were really quite um, keen to take advantage of it, at least in their survey responses. Um, what are the possible reasons for this? Um, well, of course, the second years are a year ahead, um, their grades do count for their degree classification, which gives them an incentive to use learning tools more than in the first year. They are more socialized to classroom discussion in the first years. They were doing a more focused module where they didn't have to do it. It reflected their interest. So again, they were perhaps more likely to comment. Um, but also they'd be going into the um, module knowing that a year later they were going to have to do a primary source dissertation which meant that understanding better how to use primary sources um, would be very much to their advantage and very obviously so. So I'm not entirely surprised that the second year liked it more and got more utility out of it. I, I think that was kind of to be expected. Um, Brunel is looking at the possibility of getting a license. So if it does, I will use this again. Um, and I will use it in the same cohort. So I'll use it in the third year as well. But if I get the chance to use it again, then many of the people who used it in the first year will be in my second year class. And it would be interesting to see if their responses differ second time around from first time around. I think that would be a, a very good way of finding out um, whether if you do it in the first year, it kind of socializes you more. There is not a lot I would do different. I would have liked to have used it in class more, but not enough people came with laptops or other um, devices which would make that possible. And I can't really insist people do so. So unless I happen to get a group where the majority have a laptop with them, I think this would be quite difficult. I would like Matthew Ward provide more detailed instructions ahead of time because I've seen the run through so I'd know how to do this better. Um, but beyond that, I think I would use it pretty much in the same way for primary materials and I would continue probably to use transcriptions in the first year and actual photographic representations in second and third. Um, but it's been generally a positive experience. I would like to use it again. I would very happily recommend it. It would be interesting to trial it on secondary sources, um, but then given what the students said, I'm not sure what the outcome of that would actually be. And I'll come to a close there. <laughs>